I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that, but oops, it's already done. Me and Raven, and then Colton. No, I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> I believe he said that I ran my mouth to Cassie as much as I wanted to go at him. My honest opinion is that this is why we love Rachel. Exactly. How does it feel that America thinks you chose your sex choice? Did editing play a part? They didn't air that. On your podcast. We actually interviewed Caitlin. What she said, we couldn't play it. Wow. So this might be breaking news right here. Do you think I'm pregnant? Oh my word. Hi. We are joined by Bachelor Royalty, Big Rach. <laughs> Look at her. Beautiful, even just a, in a t-shirt and a top knot. Oh, you guys are so sweet. And a scrunchie, a That's Caitlin sweet. Bristow scrunchie, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, congrats on the wedding. We got to say that first off. Thank you guys so much. I mean, it's, it's still so surreal, not just to be married, but to have married the guy that I met on a television show. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that's where I would meet my husband, even when I did the show. On your podcast. You guys- oh, we're getting into it. <laughs> we're getting into it, I can talk. Um, you guys had Mike on. So we've yeah. always been a huge fan of Mike, especially our mother. We just love him. We were hoping that he would be The Bachelor. We were excited that he was an African-American man and was gonna just do this for The Bachelor Nation, and then it didn't happen. After you've yeah. met him and spoken with him, do you still think he would have been a good option? Even more so. Oh. Even sitting down, I was fortunate. You know, Allie's not on the podcast anymore, but she was at the time that I interviewed him. But I was really fortunate that we got to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation because I just felt like we could relate to each other, both being African-American and he was considered. I mean, if it hadn't been Peter, it would have been him. So I just felt like there were so many things that I could ask him from a personal point of view, you know, more than Allie. And I think she understood that too. But just talking to him, you know, on TV, and I, I got when people said this, on TV, you didn't get a lot of him. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't go deep. So it was like he checked all the boxes, but does he have the personality to carry the lead? Well, after sitting down with him, I felt that he did. And I told him, off the record, I was just like, even though this is on the record, I said, you know, anything you need, I am there for you. I want to help you. I want to see you win. I think that you can do things bigger and better without being the lead. And who knows, maybe they'll call him back in a couple of a couple of seasons go by. Well, on your podcast also, don't mind this baby that's in the, on the screen. Um, you were talking about Pilot Pete and you said he's a little Magoo. He's a little Magoo, I don't know. So do you think this Magoo is gonna be able to carry a season? Of course, because the lead, it isn't, especially with the men, okay? The women, usually we carry it. With the men, they surround you with a cast of women who are going to be animated enough, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of drama that are gonna make it, and he's just more gonna manage it. What I do think, though, is that this, the franchise is in need of an engagement Yes, with a younger lead because they're getting flack for having somebody who's young and then this is what happens because these people aren't ready to be engaged. And so I think, I think Peter is, is a good choice because he will get engaged. He seems like a lover, like he might try to marry five of them. And I actually did run into him right before he was about to go off the grid. Yeah. I ran to him and I said, and he's, and he's cuter in person. He's very tall. And I like ran to him and I go, listen, I've been doing media and I've been a big proponent for Mike. And I said, but I have to be, I have to speak out for Mike. I was like, you just have to understand where I'm coming from. It is absolutely nothing personal to you. It's just time that someone who's a, per a person of color is the lead. And I said, I'm sure you'll be great, but please understand it's nothing personal. And then he goes, well, they took my phone away, so I really don't know what's going on. And I was like, there I go talking too much. Um, but he was really sweet about it and understood it. Because when Hannah's season out, spoke out about wanting an older lead, of course, the headlines make it seem like I don't like Hannah. But that wasn't the case. I was just a proponent for an older lead. It was nothing personal to Hannah, which is, I feel like, is my problem in Bastard Nation. 
if I say something positive, that's never going to be the headline. So when I, I speak out more than any other lead. So when I say something controversial, that so many people think I'm so negative or I'm catty, but I just say something that will attract attention and get a headline, but you're not going to see when I was like uplifting so-and-so on the podcast. It's just, she hates Kayla. <laughs> Why do they do that? What, what is it? Is it, do you think that it's a race thing? I think it's a race thing as how people, people perceive it. Um, there are other people who are outspoken in patronation. Ashley I is outspoken. Caitlin's outspoken. I think it's a race thing how I'm perceived when I'm outspoken. When I do it, I am angry. I am a bitch. I'm petty. It's very similar to in my finale when I said to Peter, oh, I well, just so you know, I'm living my best life. What the hell is wrong with saying that? But it turned into oh, thank God that was live because we saw her true colors and she was just cruel to him. The man told me I'm living a mediocre life. So why is my response so terrible? So I, I mean, yes, to be 100% honest, that I think that has to do with race. There's just certain preconceived notions we all have with certain races and there's certain stereotypes that just exist and that you attribute to certain races. And for example, I know I don't want to get into it, but when they put the headline up of, you know, me and Raven, and then they, and then Colton. Oh my God, can we talk about that? What the hell? I, I'll, I'll try not to be too much, but I will talk. No, I'm gonna talk about it. Because, because I'm gonna talk about Colton. You know, I, I, I hate that the Raven thing is getting so much attention. Honestly, my intention, I've never brought it up. I just, if I'm asked about it, I respond. And I just think it garnered so much attention because you saw that she wasn't at the wedding. So then people started asking questions why. And I was very matter of fact in how I answered it because I honestly thought, okay, people will say, oh, they're not friends and just move on. And instead it just took a life of its own. And that was honestly never my intention. I just thought if I'm very direct, people will put a pin in it. And instead it just blossomed. And then what didn't help is Colton commenting and you know, I would love for Colton to actually come on the podcast because what I'm not going to do is entertain you in the comment section of somebody else's post. What I will do is have a grown, can I curse? Yeah. Okay. What I will do is have a grown ass conversation with you and we can talk about it. But what I don't appreciate are the accusations that are being made because I believe he said that I ran my mouth to Cassie. Well, your girl follows me on Instagram. So I don't know what I could have said, you know, like he's making it seem like I said, like, don't be with him. And I would never tell another woman not to be with a man unless I had some type of relationship with her. So Cassie and I met in July at a dinner and we were with other people. We partied the night away. I had a fantastic time with Cassie and her sister and there were other people there. And I actually gave Cassie a lot of advice. Um, she was, you know, she's in school. And so she was talking to me about being an attorney, but also being presented with all these new opportunities that come with the bachelor. And so I was giving her advice about how to navigate it and really do what she wants to do and not make decisions based on what she's afraid the public may say. And she actually really thanked me about that. And she was like, you should keep giving advice to people. And we had a fantastic time. She took a selfie of us together. So I'm so confused as to why he thinks I ran my mouth. I, I my honest opinion is that she, she did say to me, oh, I know you don't like Colton. And I remember saying, I mean, I'm just indifferent. I just don't believe I have to be best friends with everybody just because we, we all come from the same TV show. I said, my thing has always been with Colton. I felt like I never really knew who he was. And so I just wish I got to understand the real him. I just wish he would more so be himself on camera because people constantly tell me he's totally different on camera. And she kind of said, agreed with me. So I was like, I don't understand why he thinks that I was running my mouth. And if I was running my mouth, like I said at the beginning, why is she following me on Instagram if I said something so bad, you know? Yeah. It's just so petty to me. You know, I just, I'm not going to, I'm as much as I wanted to go at him in the comment section. 
<laughs> I just thought, you know what? Excuse me. I need to go interview Oprah. That literally was my mindset. It was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have time for this, but I'd love to have a grown conversation with him. I'd love to hash it out. I think what irritates me is everyone's like, oh, he clapped at Rachel. And it's like, listen, that's not a clap back. I got clap backs for you. That doesn't count. This is why we love Rachel. Exactly. I'd love to hash it out and discuss it in person. I didn't know he was holding this resentment towards me. Um, what's today? October 14th. I met Cassie three months ago in July. So I don't understand why you're commenting on it on an Instagram post a week ago. Um, okay. I am so distracted right now. I'm so sorry. I am nursing my child. My other two are staring at me. What are you guys doing? <laughs> I feel like every time I turn on my television or I'm on Instagram, I see you. You are everywhere right now. You're working out. You've got your podcast, MTV, Extra, GMA. You are everywhere. Thank you, because that's what I'm trying to be. <laughs> yes. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your career as a lawyer. Are you still practicing law? No. I stopped practicing last December. And when I tell you guys, it was the hardest decision for me, just because you know, I always said I wanted to be an attorney. I worked for that. I was proud that I was an attorney, but I always felt that I wanted to do something more. Um, I just kind of fell in love with doing things on television and radio, honestly doing my media tour for the show. I always thought I would be behind the scenes because that's the kind of stuff I did in college and even in law school. Um, so yeah, all that to say, it was a really hard decision for me to step away, but I decided I have to stri strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> well, I was a witness to you being very successful as a red carpet reporter for Extra. When, I, you know, that's where I met you is at the Tyler Perry event yeah. last week. And you were very good. Did that feel natural for you? I mean, Oprah was there. Like we were interviewing some huge people that would make people like freak out. It was, it honestly was a dream. I mean, when they were telling me who was going to be there, I was like, oh, no, these people probably won't really walk the red carpet. And then they did. And it, it happened so fast that I was just like, I'm here. I have to be professional. I, I'm here to do a certain job, and I'm going to do it. But I, I did feel very comfortable. Even as Oprah was walking up, I was like, huh, there's Oprah. You know, <laughs> she, was, she was just so down to earth. There, was no, there were no airs about her at all. And I, I just felt like I had done this before. You know, it was, it was an amazing experience. That I, my only failure was that I wasn't able to sneak into the gala. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw personally that so many people came up to you. Congratulations on the wedding. Da, 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 da. I can't even imagine how many people have asked you when you're having a baby. But please, let, let us be the next. <laughs> No, it's, I will say that I was shocked at the people on the red carpet that were fans. I, I mean, I was floored. Blair Underwood came back and said, can you take a selfie with us? Right, we're trying to be the cool parents. I said, excuse me, Blair. <laughs> I said, everybody just stop and put the camera on, on them right now. <laughs> no, yeah, that's amazing. But kids, oh, um, it's funny that you say that. I literally was training today and I felt so sick and I never feel sick. And I turn to him and I go, do you think I'm pregnant? Okay. Cause this is what I say. We're not trying, but we're not preventing. So who knows? I mean, this might be breaking news right here. here. Mm -hmm. We did it. But seriously, like three hours ago, my trainer goes, do you think you're pregnant? And I was like, I, this is weird. I've never been sick like this. Who knows? Probably just overworked and run down. Bachelor um, Nation, but, we've got an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> you may. You really might. Brian goes, you think you're pregnant every oh, yeah. month, so I'm just going to ignore that you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, I have to show you something real quick. Speaking of babies, mine is, um, hold on. Let me just run upstairs really quickly. I just have to, like, I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that is sorry. <laughs> but I love it though. That's what I was no, that's what I was telling your sister. We talked about three boys and you're gonna stop, but we think you should still go for the girl. One no, more. Oh Rachel, no. Yeah. I can tell I you that I am not pregnant right now, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, but you said you wanted all boys. I do want all boys, but then I was with my friend. I have extreme baby fever. 
and I was with my friend, a producer, a bachelor producer, actually, and I was with her baby, and I just was like, man, maybe I want a girl. I'm telling you, I am just itching. I'm not ready professionally, I think, but who, when are you ever? Oh, exactly. You know? And then you'll work that into it. That'll become something that, you know, it'll open up a whole new set of doors. Okay, the baby's crying again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Please move on without me. Just go ahead, but I'll be right back. Oh my word. I love it. It makes it so real. Okay. Working mothers. <laughs> I love it. You get some really good guests on your podcast. We actually interviewed Kaylin. Oh. Before the text message scandal and all that. We interviewed her. She's one of our first guests. But what she said was so such a stark contrast to what happened we couldn't play it wow. so when, when people are like rachel's so mean it's because i i'm privy to things more than than other people get so you mentioned ali's not on the podcast anymore she's like not on it at all ever again, again? oh no yeah she's she's done um she does a lot and i think that she had to start prioritizing things like if you follow her she's been saying that she's been having trouble with molly and molly's been demanding more of her time and so when it came to things you know in her life i guess the podcast was the one thing that she had to let go especially since we just started it totally understand it i get it respect her to be able to make that decision are you gonna bring someone else in yeah we're trying out host which haven't announced that yet so there there you go we're trying out host i don't even know if i'm supposed to say that but oops it's already done who, who would you think could be the co-host like who would you like to see in the role emily oh emily <laughs> emily at the 15 year reunion emily and i were best friends really yes i love emily love her but emily has 900 children and she doesn't does. have time for that she does have a lot <laughs> in your season did you witness anything that then when you saw it play back you were like that's actually not exactly the way that that went or did, did, did editing play a part in in your story honestly no that's why i have a really hard time when people are like i was edited that way i was edited that way i mean i will say that everybody is playing fits a certain character right that's that is what i'll say just like on my season i mean when i was on nick's season i got like really drunk at a party one time they didn't air that because that did not fit into the role that i was playing <laughs> that i wasn't like necessarily i was just like it was like whoa like she really had too much to drink today <laughs> you know and it's it just didn't fit the if she's going to be the bachelorette role that's we should probably just delete that scene it didn't add anything or take anything away it was just content so i yeah it's i hate when people are like they're edit they edited me i didn't say that no yes you did your dad who has never wanted to be in the public um was always team brian with peter my dad was like the ends don't match up he's like something's off do you feel like annoyed by people's reaction? Uh, not anymore, because you're married now. So suck it, everybody. But before that, <laughs> did you feel annoyed by people who were constantly questioning the end of the show and the blah, 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 blah? Um, initially, yes. Initially, I was, it's, it's so hard. I mean, just imagine this. You've known you are engaged for months, and you've been in hiding. And all you've been waiting for is this day when you can tell the world and be public with the person that you are so in love with. And you just can't wait to do stupid things like walk down the street holding hands and, you know, like catch a ride together or, you know, just to go see the movies in public. And you're so happy to share it with everybody. And then everybody hates what you did. So you're, it's the happiest day of your life. Like at that point, that's how you feel. You're free. Yeah. And everybody's picking it apart. I can't, I can't express enough what that day was like after. And you're doing media. So everybody in your face is like, how does it feel that America thinks you, you know, chose your second choice? How do you feel about that? How does it feel that like they think you settled? How does it feel they're calling you ring? 
Ring Lindsay. That's what people were calling me. They thought I just wanted to be engaged so bad. And it was like, logically, I couldn't understand it because I'm like, you have praised me the entire time for always speaking my mind and keeping it real and, and speaking my truth and never fitting in the bachelorette mold. And now all of a sudden that's out the window because I didn't pick the guy that you wanted me to. Now all of a sudden I'm not that person. And now you're pregnant with baby Abasolo. So we're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I might be you guys. I, might be. I feel like in, the, especially since Colton season, moving this entire year to Hannah to Bachelor in Paradise, something has changed when it comes to contestants. Bachelor in Paradise, for instance, how much do you think that this social media thing is just mm. completely saturating the show and, and making it not what it used to be? Mm -hmm. It's 100% saturated. Like, is the, if I could go more than 100, I would. I would. Um, and I say that even more so after doing the 15-year reunion and talking to Trissa and Deanna and even Allie. You know, Allie talk, talks about how, you know, she's on Instagram, but only Facebook was around when she did the show. So just hearing their reasons for going on the show and just the time, even though, what, 2000, 2002, I think was the first season of Bachelorette, just like how things were back then, totally different to how things are now. I mean, girls are coming on with 40, 50,000 followers. It's like, what are, who are, what are you doing? You yeah. know, they're blocking. I said this on the podcast, I think the one that's coming up, <clears throat> I don't want to judge people for not having a profession because these days social media is running things and being an influencer really is something and it is a job. I mean, departments are created at big organizations because of it. So I don't want to demean people, but at the same time, when I see how some people act when they come on the show, I do feel like they're trying to be somebody they've seen on a prior season because they think that's going to get them a TV role or a spinoff show or a bunch of followers or dancing with the stars or something like that. But I think you're right about the, the people that are that young that are on the show. They're not ready. So it's, it's the, the show, show is something's happening, happening to the, the show. show. And I, I don't know the direction mm -hmm. of it seems counterintuitive. You know what I mean? Or you'll get Peters because a Peter is going to want to get married. He's just that type of guy, but the look at what he's done. He has a career, you know, he's, yeah, he may be living at home. I know people were joking with him about that, but he's a pilot. Why does he need to be paying rent when he's in the air all the time, you know, in different cities? So it totally makes sense for him to live at home, but he's got his job. He's set. He's solid. And the four times in the windmill, I mean, come on. I told somebody, I said, listen, if I'm one of the girls getting into the fantasy suite and you don't at least do it four times with me, like, I'm just, like, he has set himself up to, like, he's got to hit that and be on. <laughs> that is so true. That is true. I never thought about that. You had reality Steve on, too. Oh, yeah. Killing it. We're trying. Yeah, where do you think reality Steve gets his info? Cast members. <laughs> I'll put it. I, I don't care what he tells y'all. I think, I, I think that there are people who send, absolutely send him stuff and at, who send him dirt and who send him pictures when they're on the road and they're filming. Absolutely, that's not cast. But I think he films the, it fills in the holes of cast members. Like people who just got kicked off or people who are still on? Oh, okay. Do you yeah. think he's paying them or they're just willingly? No. No, I do not think he, I don't think he pays them at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe him when he says that. I think it's a sign of the times. Use just like the social media, people just want the recognition. They want to be affiliated with Reality Steve. He's become a household name. People who don't even watch the show will say to me, yeah, I didn't really watch The Bachelorette, but I know that there's this guy named Reality Steve. Who, I mean, he's a household name. Kudos to him. But he doesn't even have to pay for them. They just want to talk. So it's you the whole time. He's never even reached out to me. I don't know if I should be offended. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rachel, I got to Thank you. We love you. Boot. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. It's so great talking to you guys. Right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, wait, was, <laughs> was this distracting for anyone?
no, you besides me. I mean, what on I earth? mean, but how much milk is, is he just he's, not? No, he's just using uh -oh. me as a pacifier right now. <laughs> That was the most distracting. That was crazy. Of all. 